Hi, I'm Ann Mahaffey and I'm an applications engineer working on web tools here at Analog Devices. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, SAR ADC and how we would describe the behavior of this ADC at the input. Um, and so the reason that this is important to understand is that as the um, precision and the sample rates of these ADCs continues to get higher, they're becoming more and more difficult to drive. Um, and as I, as I describe the, the model and how we would model this ADC, I think that will become clearer as to why. Um, and so the thing to understand about this very simple model of this ADC input is that we've got this switch that alternates between a conversion phase and an acquisition phase. And so when, um, when the ADC is acquiring the signal or the switch closes, and whatever voltage is on this input is uh, transferred over to the sample cap. And then when the switch opens, we have moved into a conversion phase. And um, I'm not going to go into any kind of detail on what's going on inside this ADC, but it's just to say that, that the voltage on this sample cap uh, gets digitized and is available at the output of the ADC. Um, and because these SAR ADCs have zero cycle latency, um, whatever is uh, converted you know, from the voltage that sampled is available on the output of the ADC at the next cycle. Um, and so what this model is, is helping us understand is what is going on at this node so that we will be able to make design decisions about the circuitry that we connect to this ADC. And so a simplification that we make to this model to make um, the math a little easier and also because it's a pretty good representation of a worst case scenario uh, settling condition is that we make an assumption that this capacitor is discharged to ground at the end of the conversion cycle. So what that means is if we were to look at the voltage on that sample cap right here. If we were to look at it at this point in time where it switches from conversion to acquisition and the switch closes, that this is gonna be sitting at zero volts. And then as when the switch closes, this voltage on the sample cap is going to start to settle at whatever voltage we're trying to drive at the input. Um, so this is just a basic understanding of, of how this sample cap is going to impact um, the, the circuitry down, you know, upstream. So something else to consider or to understand is that we do have, you know, very often we will uh, interface this ADC with a, a driver, an RC filter. And so we need this driver to, um, to, to get this voltage on the sample cap back up to, you know, once it does this, this um, disturbance, when it drags this node to ground, um, this driver is needed to, to bring the voltage back up to where it needs to be. We also have this RC filter, which um, does a lot of different things. And we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about that in a later video, but for now, um, let's just, you know, say that uh, simply put, it's limiting the bandwidth of um, the signal that's, that's downstream. And so any noise that's coming in from the signal chain and from the driver, it's gonna limit the bandwidth of that noise coming in. So, but, but a side effect of this RC filter is it's also going to limit how quickly we can settle from this uh, charge redistribution that occurs. So what, what we need to be able to make good design decisions about this circuit is we need to be able to quantify what is this charge distribution gonna look like and what do we need to select for these components to ensure that that settling is going to occur um, in the time that's needed. And so what this node, so we've got this curve right here that, that tells us what's going on on the sample cap. We don't really care all that much what's going on during conversion. That's not um, relevant for you know, determining what's going on with this node. Um, but what we do care about is on the input of the ADC, so across that capacitor, that filter capacitor, let's say we're driving a signal 
And then at that point where the switch closes, that's when this node wants to drag the whole thing to ground um, at that instance. So we're gonna get this drop, this voltage drop at that node. And then the driver's gonna kick in and it's gonna try to bring everything back to the signal that's coming in. So, um, so this is, this is this curve is going to have a shape that's like an RC decay, you know, exponential. So it's a combination of these capacitors and this resistor. So it's going to have a time constant that's a combination of that resistor and those two capacitors. And so this just gives us the basic framework for how we can then move forward with some equations and some math to come up with some intelligent decisions about what these components need to be. And I'll cover that in later videos.